Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about steel rule dies and adjusting them and modifying them for your needs. So I love steel rule dies. I use them daily in my flower making, but some of the dies shapes are not quite exactly what I want. Some of them are meant more for paper and some of them have embossing lines and all sorts of stuff that you're just like, I don't want that in my felt flowers. So I wanna walk you through ways that you can modify your dies and take out some of those little itsy bitsy parts that you're like, no, I want this gone. Let me kind of go over what I'm actually talking about. So I wanna show you a few dies here. So I add blue tape to all of my dies so that I can see exactly what I'm cutting here because you would not be able to see this on camera with the black on black. So the what I'm talking about is on this die specifically, you have this little, it's really hard to see, I hope you can see, the little etched mark right there. So when I'm cutting a leaf and I'm cutting six of them at a time, what happens is that bottom one to two leaves that are closest to the die are actually cutting all the way through. And then those die pieces are actually ruined and I can't really use them for what I want. What I've learned is you can manipulate and take out the blades in the die so that that no longer happens. All right, so let's back up actually and talk about what a steel roll die is and how it works. Okay, so we have these, quite a few dies here to show you, but basically what it is, is it's this foam piece. So you have a plastic case and inside this plastic case, you have a piece of wood and inside that piece of wood are blades that are glued into the wood. And then we have a piece of foam on top of that. So if you really, if you push down on the foam, you can actually see the blades pop up. This was a well used die. So I've pushed the foam down so much that you could actually see the blade without having to push down the foam. Normally you're not gonna be able to see the blades because they're hiding between the foam. When you put this through your machine, it compresses the foam. So you put pressure on the material down against the blade, which actually cuts it. So the thing I love about steel rule dies is that you can put quite a bit of material on them and still get a really good clean cut because of all the pressure of the machine. Like I said, sometimes there's a little bit of lines and pieces in there that you're just like, I don't want that in there and it's actually making my cuts not the way I want them. So how do we modify them? This is one that I've actually modified already and I'll peel the tape up. Okay, so this is a die that I've already modified and I'm gonna go ahead and take my tape out to see if I can show you. Ooh, I'm gonna pull the whole thing out, which is great. Okay, so I pulled the tape off and I actually will show you, here's the blade and then the foam cushion. And then also that hole right there is the piece that I took out. So there was formerly a little piece a, a circle blade right there that I removed because I wanted this nice clean petal oval shape, but I didn't want two holes in it. So I was able to remove those little holes and just to make it a flat piece. So I will show you how you could do that with one of these shapes as well, because these ones have quite a few different little blades in them where you're gonna cut through your felt or fabric or whatever you're using and you're gonna put a line there that you might not necessarily want. So for instance, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off as well. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a really, really good solid pair of needle nose pliers. And you do need to have some strength with your hand. Some of these dies are glued in so tight that I've had to have my husband come through and really, really yank them out. Some of them I've been able to do. It just totally depends. So we know where the blade is because of that cut line and because of our tape in the foam. So we know we can just put our blade on it and I have a good, good hold of that blade right now. And I'm just gonna rock it back and forth and pull the blade out. So this is what the blade looks like. It's obviously very sharp on the end and it's um, not on the bottom. But for instance, this one was a piece of cake for me to pull out. Um, this one was incredibly easy for me to pull out. Some of them are gonna be significantly harder. This is a very old die, which when they used to do like red bases. So this the glue might be kind of deteriorating and that sort of a thing and made it easier to come out. You take one of these brand new dies, I don't know, it might not come out. Like, all right, let's just try this one for instance. Okay, so this is the mistletoe die. 
I just picked this one up and this is the bow for instance. And I don't like the little notches that are on this bow. This is a bigger blade right here as well. Sometimes the littler ones are easy to get out. But let's see if we can get this one out. So just really getting in there. Yeah, this one is way more stuck in there than that one was. And when you're putting downward pressure on it, be sure to put your hand on the black foam, not anywhere near a blade. Because if you start pushing on that blade, you will cut yourself in about 10 seconds. So I'm going to take off the blue tape on here too, actually, so we have a better, better look at this blade. So I am definitely pulling this blade up right now. It's definitely just taking a little bit of force. Some of them get kind of caught on themselves too when they have different turns. It's almost coming, guys. Ha ha! And there it is. While it does take a little bit of strength, I was able to do it. If you need help, I mean, my husband's had to do a few of them for me because I'm just like, I just can't get it out. Um, but I wanted to show you, for instance, like this one too, it's got a embossing line all the way down the leaf, where like, if I'm gonna cut out six leaves, I'm not gonna want that embossing line. So I'll probably end up taking that one out as well. So just different ideas of how you're gonna want to adjust these to make them suit your needs better. Just remember, you take them out, you can't put them back in. It's uh, like this die is destroyed. I mean, it's not destroyed. It's, it's modified and custom for you now. So just keep that in mind as far as when you're gonna take stuff out, you're committing to taking it out. I found it being incredibly helpful to adjust dies to my specific needs instead of just trying to like work around it. It just, it doesn't take much effort to get something exactly what you want. Remember that you're working with blades, so be incredibly careful as you're working with it. Just double check that you're not putting any pressure on any of the bladed areas. I highly suggest putting tape on your die so you know exactly where every blade is on your die when working with it so you're not gonna like miss a hidden blade um, and hurt yourself because I've definitely done that before and it doesn't feel good. Safety first. I hope this helps. Uh, let me know if this was helpful in the comments and let me know if you have dies laying around that you're just like, ooh. I wish it just didn't have that. Um, also, I hope this opens the door with dyes that you would potentially buy. Just knowing that you're like, oh, I really love that shape. If only it had those little dots missing. So I hope that just helps you broaden and look at dyes differently so that you could buy them and know that you're like with a few little tweaks you can make it exactly what you want. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more fun felt flower tips and tricks and anything to do with die cutting. And I hope this was great and helpful. So yay. <laughs> All right, guys, I will catch you next time. See you later, guys.